The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the producers and the individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the staff of the Sun Prairie Media Center, its members or underwriters, the board members of the Media Center Commission, Charter Communications, TDS Telecom, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit. The man seated next to me teaches the Macarena to seniors. His name is Mike Roth. I do it backwards. Yeah? Yeah. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> senior citizens. We start off like this. They'll do whatever you tell them to do, Mike. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, so how I was your week? I want to watch this. I just want to see it. I wanna no, see I, it. I don't know how to do that. Uh, so this week, sir, we have three movies on the marquee, as well as a really fun throwback movie. Yeah. Uh, which I'm excited to get to. But first, we have to get through this movie. No, no. The first movie on the marquee is a film that I have called Mile 22 from director Peter Berg. Peter Berg. <laughs> um, uh, starring Mark Wahlberg, as all Peter Berg movies lately <laughs> seem to do. This is their fourth collaboration in a row. Um Mark Wahlberg uh, is a guy named uh, James Silva. He is an elite uh, Jason Bourne type. Uh, he's an intelligence officer. He leads a team to smuggle this informant, this uh, mysterious police officer, um, the 22 miles uh, to an airport for extradition. Uh, this guy, the uh, informant, is played by Iko Unwes, who uh, nice. was uh, great in uh, The Raid Redemption. Um, but anyways... Um, uh, he has a team uh, put together uh, of people, uh, mainly Lauren Cohen, who we know from uh, Walking Dead, mm -hmm. um, is one of his uh, teammates, um, and uh, it led by John Malkovich, is like the leader back in the main office, the CIA leader, uh, plays a guy named Mother, who is kind of directing traffic from his headquarters. I like John Malkovich. Yeah, yeah, he's a good time. Um, the movie kind of cuts back and forth from what's happening now to um, Mark Wahlberg's character talking in the future about what went wrong in the past, so you know he's going to make it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> cutting to his uh, him as a kid. And we find out that, uh, that Mark Wahlberg's character is, uh, um, he's like a Jack Ryan type mixed with like the accountant, mm -hmm. where he's incredibly intelligent, probably the most intelligent person ever. But he's got some anger and some impulse issues. <gasps> Mark Wahlberg acting that out of the box. And so you will <laughs> see in the trailer even and throughout the, throughout the movie, um, one of the things, the, one of the techniques he was taught as a kid was to wear a rubber band around his wrist and snap the rubber band oh. anytime he was having an issue. So throughout the movie, he's snapping this rubber band thousands of times. It does get old. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of mumbo jumbo in this movie, a lot of pseudo psychology that he's kind of talking about. And uh, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of really terrible dialogue between everyone. It feels like it, it was something that looked really cool on paper, uh -huh. but nobody was able to deliver the dialogue correctly. Well, you got people like Ronda Rousey. Correct. Ronda Rousey's <laughs> in this movie is one of his other teammates on this team. Uh -huh. you know, and boy, can she act. <laughs> Yikes. Um, th th my issue with this movie was I get in there, and it feels like I missed the first 30 minutes of the movie. We drop into this scene where they're going to take – uh, they're going after this chemical weapon. They're raiding a house. And and then it just kind of keeps going. But I don't really know any of the teammates. And other than Lauren Cohen, who's the, she's the only one that you really get to know even a little bit. And in most of her character is just that, well, she's a mother outside of this. She's an assassin here. But mm -hmm. she's she's got a child. That's the like the most that you get to know about anyone <laughs> in this movie. Hmm. And so it feels like you're just kind of dropped in, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And I brought a friend – uh, our very own Anthony Danu from the station here, and I asked him the same thing. I was like, "What'd you think?" He's like, "It was very confusing because it felt like it, you spent the entire movie trying to play catch up with like what's going on. It felt mm -hmm. like twenty pages of script were missing." Um, but anyway, so they're trying to smuggle this guy, and of course, there's all the bad guys trying to stop him. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of terrible fight choreography in this movie. See, the previews made it seem like uh, there would be some decent fight There's scenes some in there. 
cool fight moments and cool fight scenes. And Iko Uwais, who is, I mean, he is, The Raid Redemption is my favorite action movie ever. Yeah. And he has some incredible, indelible moments in, in that movie, in both of those movies. Um, unfortunately, you get a lot of Jason Bourne style cuts yeah. where there's fights going on and you're just kind of seeing arms and legs fly at places. And yeah. every once in a while, you get a good peek at something cool. Like, oh, look at that. Uh, oh, and there were quick cuts again. And pretty yeah. soon, I'm not sure who's even who anymore. I'm assuming a lot of shaky cam also because they use that to confuse yeah, action yeah, scenes. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's all of the techniques that we have known to hate. Yeah. In these fight scenes where it's like, so what are we covering up? You have someone who's an incredible <laughs> action star. Uh -huh. Let me see it. Show it to me. Um, and, and so that was kind of frustrating. Um, I wish I could see more of his fight. The script was just kind of messy. The dialogue was stilted. It's kind of strange, too, because, you know, I'm not a huge Mark Wahlberg fan, but I think that his three movies previous to this with Peter Berg, have been the best movies that he's done. I mean, with Lone Survivor, with Deepwater Horizon, um, with the, the the firefighter movie. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, the, oh, uh, Boston, the Boston bombing movie. Mm -hmm. I think those have all been like, yeah, that's pretty good. Mark Wahlberg, like they have a good collaboration. I think. Yeah. And this one just felt like it was a mess. Um, John Malkovich was fun. Lauren Cohen was mm -hmm. interesting uh, in some pretty good action on her own. Mm -hmm. I, I feel bad that uh, Ronda Rousey really didn't make an acting career. Yeah. I mean, I, she's, she she's seems okay. really cool. Don't worry about her. She's, okay. right. she's, she's a WWE champion now. Yeah. Well. She's out there wrestling people. Well. This The best part of this movie, I don't know if you've ever watched SNL or seen anything, but Andy Samberg used to do this great impression of Mark Wahlberg. It was a terrible impression of him. Yeah. But it would always end with, say hello to your mother for me. <laughs> that, was how, that was like his entire impression was based around that line. Yeah. This movie has that, uh, where a character <laughs> says to Mark Wahlberg, say hello to your mother for me. He's like, wait, what What did you say to me? <laughs> that made me laugh out loud. That's unfortunate that that's the best part of the movie. Oh. <laughs> um, so I end up giving Mile 22 two stars. Oh, well, at least it goes with us. Yeah, I mean, it's not awful, bit. but yeah, it fits yeah. in, right? We're all twos in this movie. Mm -hmm. So there you go, Mile 22. You can skip it. All right. What do you have for us, sir? I have a little bit better movie. Do you? Yeah. Um, I have Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, th this is all about uh, Rachel Chu, played by Constance Wu. Um, she is an um, Chinese American, so I mean she's all American, mm -hmm. but um, she has roots Chinese in China. Descent, yeah. And she is a economics professor who is dating a really cute guy. She doesn't know him, but she loves him. And later she finds out, which after a year of them dating, that uh, Nick Young, played by um, Henry Golding. He is like the most popular rich playboy yeah. in all of uh, Singapore. Yeah. And um, she goes with him to see a, a wedding, and that's how she finds out. She meets the family, and she feels a lot like a fish out of water. Even though she has roots from China, she is an American, and as an American, she's not quite fitting in with a strict uh uber wealthy crowd right. and um there is some high expectations eleanor young uh, she plays uh nick's uh mother um played by michelle Yee. michelle yo is yo. awesome she Coaching is tiger hidden dragon she very old. is awesome I love her. and um she plays the mother that pretty much lets rachel know that she will never fit in you'll never be good enough this movie is fa has a fantastic look to it. Mm -hmm. There is a wedding scene in here, and I don't get verklempt very often, yeah. especially Pretty at awesome. wedding scenes, but that wedding scene <laughs> was so beautiful yeah. that, you know, the big guy with the beard, he's like, no, this is so <laughs> nice. I love this so much. <laughs> I don't advise anybody to get married just for this, but it was a really cool wedding. Yeah. There's a lot of really fun characters. Oh, the there is. Uh, Rachel has a really good friend. Um, forget her name. I don't know. But, Aquafina? Yeah, but she is um, totally Americanized, but she lives out in China, and she, uh, she used to be roommates with her out in uh, college. I love her interaction. Um, we saw her recently in uh, Ocean's... That's Aquafina. That's Aquafina. Yeah. Is that her real name? That's her real name. Oh, wow. Yes. That is awesome. Yeah. She's like the... Her and um, the, the character uh, played by Nico Santos from uh, Superstore... Who's like the designer? 
Uh-huh. They're like the two that are really her shoulder to lean on as, a fa- as the family is just beating down on her. Oh, yeah. They're kind of the respite of like, yeah, I know our family's crazy, but we need to stay in their good graces, so we're not going <laughs> to rock the boat. <laughs> we want some of that money. Um, I, l- there's, I think there's so much going on in this movie that's really important. I, I, and I think right from the get-go, when the movie opens, we're m- introduced with this in-your-face blatant racism yeah. as we flash back to a few decades ago and they're the young family is just trying to get a hotel room. They're rich, but they don't flaunt it to this hotelier mm-hmm. and they are turned away because they're Chinese. Yeah. And they're told, like, you're not good enough, sorry. No, 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 maybe you can go to Chinatown. And it's some really tough to look at racism uh-huh. right away. And then through this movie, I mean, that's kind of part of the thing is it's class, it's racism, it's even within the Chinese culture, there's the old school Chinese. And then there's ones like Rachel who kind of stereotypes herself. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't embrace the heritage uh, that she came from and the yeah. customs and traditions. And so she stands up and she goes over there like, they're like, oh, you're one of those Chinese. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have the, you know, the, the obvious, the class difference where she's just not good enough. I mean, even when she, she's just caught, someone takes a picture of her and Nick on a date. Uh-huh. And she's instantly demonized by this entire online society because she's not special. Uh huh. Which I thought was a fantastic scene where yeah. they're in a coffee shot, and they, uh, coffee um, house, and within like just five minutes, it gets all over right. China. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Everyone Everywhere. knows about it. <laughs> you know, and, and she meets this family, and, and she finds out that, you know, the, fam- the mom especially hates her, like, you are not good enough for my son. And the guilt that she starts to feel because I don't want to be the one that holds him back from his destiny. Yeah. He's got expectations on him to take over the heirs of this billion-dollar family franchise and to marry someone who is an elite and whose family is an elite. And you can't, you know, it's a classic prince and the, you know, regular girl. Yeah. (laughs) But it's that classic story. But, you know, the guilt of like, well, I love him, but I don't want to be the thing that stands between him and his what he should be. You know, it's kind of tough tough to watch sometimes you yeah. know and i thought that i thought that they but did it, very well with it but it maintained a lot of humor yes and a lot of romance and a lot of things to see and all the characters were fantastic i can't think of a single character where no. i was like oh there they could have so many too there was oh, a yeah. lot of characters in here a lot of family i love that creepy kid that uh yeah. rachel was staying with yeah, yeah. Like, i love you <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome you know, i thought it was really interesting was they have you know ken jong is in this movie yeah for a minute in a couple of scenes, he's yeah. You have perhaps the most recognizable Asian American actor uh-huh. right now, uh, you know. And and they in one scene even like he tries to pop in like in the uh, there's a party, and he like it's like hey and gets pushed out of the scene. <laughs> I was like that's kind of ballsy to like do that. Like we got Ken Jong, but we're not even gonna use him. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're fine. Uh, I, yeah, there was there's a lot of interesting characters, a lot of interesting uh, couples. I thought it was a really nice love story. I, I thought so, too. I didn't think it really broke any uh, boundaries in yeah. original movies, but it was just told really well. And it's also extremely exciting to see a movie where we could see Asian, uh, Asian actors uh, do something besides what they're typically And that's put the in. big thing is, I mean, I- you know, it, it shows that love isn't easy or simple, mm-hmm. no matter what. Yeah. Um, but it's imp- it's so important because I mean I don't have to be the one to tell you I don't have to be the <laughs> but I mean it's so rare in Hollywood movies to have a cast that you know for Asian people to see that reflects them yeah and they're not stereotypes or tertiary characters in the background but a whole cast that's able to be celebrated and uh, you know it's it's great and it's great that it's making a ton of money and people are supporting it and yeah I really enjoy it. Same here. Yeah. What did you end up giving Crazy Rich Asians? I gave it a 3.5. Mm-hmm. Um, I was having on four, but I brought it back a little bit because I didn't think the topic was original. But yeah. I do feel like this is a special movie, uh, and everybody should go see it. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I went ahead and gave it the four. Um, I, I dug it. I really like uh, Constance Wu, too. I love her in Fresh Off the Boat. Yeah. Uh, it's a great show, and uh, I thought she was really fun in this. Um, mm. The next movie we have, sir, is a movie from Albert Hughes, uh, starring Cody Smith McPhee. It's a movie called Alpha. Um, it is set uh, 20,000 years ago in Europe. Um, Kida is the son of, of the tribal chief, 
he is uh, challenged to show his leadership. He's taken out uh, with the other men of the village um, on a buffalo hunt. He needs to go out there and walk several days to find the killing fields, the hunting grounds. And along the way, he is challenged to show that he can take up the take up the mantle of tribal chief when his father passes away. Unfortunately, we find out that Kida cannot kill an animal uh, mm -hmm. when when faced with it. Um, uh, yet they continue on the hunt, and uh, poor Kida is thrown by a buffalo. Uh, the, the, the visual, it was very 300 style to me. Yeah. The slow-mo is this buffalo is throwing him <laughs> off this cliff. Uh, he lands on this ledge where he is completely unreachable. He's left for dead and kind of mourned by his father and the tribe. Um, they have to leave him. And he awakens sometime later to find out that he's alone and injured and many days from home <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do um, so he kind of is able to set off on his own after some ingenuity he's hurt quickly he becomes the prey to a pack of wolves mm -hmm. um, he's able to fight back some and he injures the leader or the alpha that's going to come into play <laughs> of uh, the wolf pack um, but instead of killing the wolf he uh, he carries it kind of to safety, realizes that they kind of share uh, a common thing. Um, he helps mend the wolf, and they set off on this long journey home where it's kind of the two of them learning to bond. You know what I find is crazy? What's that? What you just explained was like exactly what the preview was. Yeah, as it was going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I mean, you, you saw a lot of the story in right. the preview. Yeah, you, you do. You do. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the two of them learning about each other. Yeah. You know, he learns that at some point he has to learn how to take lives to save lives mm -hmm. be for someone else. I, I find this really interesting. This is kind of like the story of the first domesticated animal. Yeah. It really <laughs> is. I, and how I thought wolves this got to Europe? And a and <laughs> couple of things that I loved about the movie is, well, this is all set – place in the stone age mm -hmm. and that sense of if you left where all your people are it is extremely dangerous it's not like mm -hmm. us when we go into a nature uh controversy uh, it, it's yeah. yeah it's really dangerous yeah. because humans are the minority they're not the scary thing to the animals right. and animals can still pick us off absolutely at that you time. saw the one scene where a saber-toothed tiger just kind of swooped in and grabbed yep. somebody just gonna grab you yep. hello and it was like okay and nobody really even got a chance to mourn it was like well, that sucks. <laughs> but that's part of everyday life. Every is a day. Like, it might get you. And we really don't have to deal with it. Well, unless you're in the outback somewhere. Right. <laughs> what was also interesting about this movie, and I didn't expect going in, is it's all in a foreign tongue. Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting to me because I didn't know that mm -hmm. um, going into it. I don't know what tongue it was in. I'm not sure what language no. it was. Uh, but uh, Klingon, I don't know. It, I don't think that. I think the point was, you know, this is maybe yeah. a. I actually enjoyed that. I'm yeah. glad that they did that. That Same was a good here. choice to really make it feel like, yeah, they're not speaking English. There's only a couple of things that threw me out of the time period. Um, mm -hmm. The perfect teeth. Yeah. The, the age of a lot of people. <sighs> Everyone's got um, perfect skin. Mm -hmm. And poor Kida, after like four days out there, still pretty clean. But but a lot of his the hair, other his hair <laughs> is pretty combed out and shaved and he's all good. Yeah, and and also uh, the ages too. I'm sure he probably would have been a lot younger when yeah. he went out on the first hunt because and no one died in their thirties. Yeah, and we had a bunch of people that were over their thirties also. Yeah. But besides that, I felt like this was really well placed. Um, they made me feel the sense of danger of what it would have been like just trying to uh, grow up without metal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because really, like, the one big test of, uh, you know, can you be a man is, can you make a spear tip? Yeah. And can you take this stone and make a spear tip that will that will hunt and be safety and all these things? Yeah. That's, like, one of the major things you need to know. Yeah. And it's like, nope, you suck. Nope, you suck. It's not like Boy Scouts if you can't tie a knot. Yeah. This is like, no, we cannot survive with this. Right. And if this is the best... You don't graduate. The tiger's taking you next. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did like that scene also where he just couldn't kill an animal. And at first I was thinking, oh, that's a little silly. But if someone has never gone outside of the camp because it's just way too dangerous, he might never have had the chance yeah. to kill. So I was thinking in perspective, yeah, maybe it would have been difficult even though life was extremely hard back then. I, uh, I enjoyed a lot of the shots in this movie. There was oh, some really... Beautiful visuals. There was an ice cave that 
he and Alpha were in at one point. Yeah. Kind of in, in the final act. Mm -hmm. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I saw it in 3D. Oh. Um, on accident. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> the 3D actually looked really good for um, landscapes. Okay. Uh, especially it, towards the beginning, as you're setting out on the journey, and it would be show large landscapes. Yeah. It looked beautiful. Halfway through the movie, it felt like it wasn't used anymore. Yeah. Um, the scene that really disturbed me and had me like look away was there is a scene uh, when he's waking up on that ledge and the buzzards are attacking. Oh, Guess yeah. who's got a big time <laughs> issue with that? Ooh, <laughs> that scared and me. A big 3D bird. Oh, a big uh, buzzard just going uh, after his eye? No thanks. And, and as far as the CG went, I mean, yeah, you could tell, but it, it was really pretty good. I think uh, for the most part, I they used real animals. They just CG'd expressions that they wanted. Big smiles on them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, my my main issue with the movie is that it was predictable. Yeah. I've seen this movie. It's very much Call of the Wild with White Fang, like Boy and His Dog story. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I've seen that, you know, and you're like, I'm guessing he's going to make it. I don't know. Um, but I like the relationship between the two of them. I yeah. thought that was interesting. I agree. The story isn't original. I like the time setting, mm -hmm. I guess. And I thought them using the time setting and trying to be as true to that time setting besides the age and the perfect yeah, teeth, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it was pretty true. Uh, oh, and also uh, the costumes were actually pretty darn good for Stone Age bad. stuff. Yeah, they, they were good tailors. Not a lot of Levi's out there. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what did you end up giving Alpha? I gave it a four. I, I, I really liked it. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gave it a three stars. It was better than I thought it was going to be, actually. Excellent. Kind of went in thinking it was going to be meh. Yeah. It was better than that. So that's always nice. Um, so for our throwback movie this week, sir, um, we are throwing back based off of Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Um, and you nominated this movie, which I'm so glad you did. 1993, director Wayne Wang uh, directed a film called The Joy Luck Club. Um, I had never seen this all the way through. Yeah. You hadn't seen this before. Yeah. We went off of it just based on... Uh, it's really, unfortunately, the last all-Asian cast 25 years ago mm -hmm. was the last time we really had a movie. Oh, I, there was uh, one white guy. There was a couple of white guys. Well, but, uh, yeah, I mean, still. right. But, uh, but, it was the but it was the story. Yeah, and this, I mean, really is an epic movie. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, it, the story is based around four mothers. They came from the old country, which is China, and they all play mahjong together. Um and as they tell stories, it goes into other stories. And really, this movie is divided into three generations mm -hmm. of stories. Uh, all four mothers, their mothers, and their daughters. And you also go through the situational life of the daughters. And they're all having uh, just normal relationship problems or problems with racism. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about life and growth and the the title is really confusing because there really isn't a lot of joy or yeah. luck in this movie yeah. at all. But it is shot spectacularly, and they're able to communicate so many bits of life without you making it feel like they're cramming it all in just for the sake of a movie. Right. I, um, Wayne Wang did a fantastic job on this, and I really would love to see more movies like this. Um, yeah, I... I watched it for the first time all the way through um, last week when you mentioned it, and then I ended up watching it again a couple days later uh -huh. because there's it's there's a, so much interwoven in here yeah. in these stories, and it's really a, a, a lot. You know, these both the mothers and the daughters and flashing back and telling stories, and they're going through pain and they're going through family issues and mm -hmm. just regular. You know, especially the, the kind of the two main characters that I attach to were June and Waverly. Okay. And part of it was because they're both really well-known actresses to me. June played by uh, Ming-Na Wen, who was on ER for a number of years. And mm -hmm. Waverly played by Tamlin Tomita. I mean, she was the star of Karate Kid 2. I mean, she was Oh, Well, we have Lisa, Lisa Liu, who was... Right, right. <laughs> um, in both of our movies. But you, right, she was in both of them. <laughs> but, you know, the, they, they, they hurt each other, as family can do sometimes. And then they help each other heal. Yeah. And these stories and, like, the loss of a mother and how aunties you know are kind of 
helping out. And it's just there's so much interwoven in all these stories that I was just I was kind of mesmerized by the whole thing. And it's all based on a, a novel by Amy Tan, who yeah. uh, most of us who grew up or have kids during the time uh, know her from the Sagwas. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Because she wrote that. (laughs) And I think, just as we said with Crazy Rich Asians, I think The Joy Luck Club is a very important film. It is. And it's it's sad to look back and realize that it's been 25 years since there was the last film that really featured uh, an Asian cast like this and allowed Asians and Asian Americans to see someone who looked like them up on the screen Mm -hmm. as a star and a whole family. And we're just regular people and not... Characters, uh, yeah, or stereotypes, which exactly. is typically what happens. Yeah, and uh, this felt it's real. Sad. It felt like real people. Yeah, yeah, uh, fantastic stories, stuff that's going to actually carry with me. It's the first time that I've seen it, and yeah. uh, I, I'm not going to forget some of those scenes. Excellent choice. So it's really our recommendation off this throwback that if you haven't seen Joy Luck Club or haven't seen it in a while, it's definitely worth going out, finding, watching, watch it a couple times. Yeah, like it's, you do. Yeah, it's, it's enjoyable. It's good. It is. Um, all right, and I sir. hear the novel's really great, too. <sighs> but reading. This is a movie this show. Is a, exactly. It's not a reading show. Books are bad. <laughs> Go to Marcus Theaters. Take please. your books out of here. <laughs> um, let's take a look ahead. Uh, a couple of movies are going to be coming out in the upcoming week. Um, August 29th, we have one movie called Operation Finale. It stars Oscar Isaacs and Ben Kingsley. It is a movie about um, this undercover team that is going out to hunt down a Nazi officer that they believe was the uh, man who started the Holocaust. Oh. So we're going to go find him. Nice. Yeah, fingers crossed. He didn't say Sir. sir ben I'm sorry, Sir Ben Kingsley. Thank like, you. <laughs> um, and then uh, two days later, on August 31st, we have a movie called Kin, which is a sci-fi film uh, uh, that looks kind of interesting to me. I, I haven't seen any trailers for it yet. It looks interesting about a kid and uh, an adult who are going off to uh, just do some sci-fi war type thing. <laughs> all right, cool. It's hard to tell from the description, but it looks interesting because it's all sci-fi. I like that. Now this week. <laughs> oh, boy. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, yeah, because uh, next week's show, is we're going to have some interesting movies to talk about. I hope you have another barn burner of a throwback for us for next week. No. No? No. Oh, <laughs> we we got to work, work on again. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we leave you, of course, we want to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, the Palace here in Sun Prairie. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Mike, you know, this past week I was at Corn Fest, and so was nice. the Palace. They had a little stand set up there. Spin a wheel, win a prize. Oh, I missed it. It was pretty great. It was pretty good. They had a line, because at, at, I was down there representing 103.5 The Sun, uh-huh. Sun Prairie's premium radio station. Uh, I was waiting for a ding. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we actually interviewed somebody from, from there. But uh, our booth was like kitty corn from them. And sometimes the line was like down to us. Like 30 people in line waiting to spin a wheel, win a prize. Should have partnered with them. <laughs> yeah. And both, of, both teams put together. I offered we could make some trades, you know. Mm-hmm. You give me a stack of three whatever. <coughs> did they have cool stuff like they did at Comic-Con? Like they the had lots of cool stuff. Like uh, they did. You can win a cool I coin and buttons or free movies. I still got it was great. I still got my Kingsman koozie. Ah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that's what I was. <laughs> Kingsman koozie. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you to the Palace. Uh, if you want to find more from us, you can find us online, Facebook, Twitter. Just search Real Reviews TV. Find us uh, online, all our previous episodes, by going to sunprairiemediacenter.com. There's an on-demand player there. Watch a whole bunch of us, or you can find us on YouTube as long as we don't get taken down. <laughs> oh no, I need no more. <laughs> uh, Real reviews, K S U N. Uh, next week, sir, we're gonna have movies such as Axel. It's about a boy and his robotic dog. It's the same story, but in the future. <laughs> Ooh, maybe, maybe that one's 20,000 years. Just don't know. Oh, Ancient aliens. If they could say this was a reincarnation, oh, that would be fantastic. They unearth it. Uh, we also have Melissa McCarthy and some Muppets doing some R rated shenanigans with the Happy Time Murders. <sighs> Crickets. Until <laughs> next time, though, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Have a good one. 